Hello students, welcome to MEC 1321 Engineering Statics. My name is Dr. Stewart and today we're going to go over uh, material for chapter 10. Uh, chapter 10 is titled Moments of Inertia and our objectives for this chapter are going to be to develop a method for determining the moment of inertia for an area. In this chapter or in this video we're going to cover four of the sections of chapter 10. Uh, the first section 10.1 is definition of moments of inertia for areas. Section 10.2 is the parallel axis theorem for an area. Section 10.3 is radius of gyra gyration of an area. And uh, section 4 is moments of inertia for composite areas. So let's go ahead and get started with the first section, uh, section 10.1, which is the definition of moments of inertia for areas. So the area moment of inertia is a 2D property that describes the capacity of a cross section to resist bending. Um, it must be specified with respect to a chosen axis uh, about which uh, rotation would occur. Um, and the units of the moment of inertia for areas is either in meters uh, to the fore or feet to the fore, right? So, and uh, so it's a uh, to the fore or to the power four uh, length property. So let us examine a 2D area that would be subject to a distributed load. So say we had some kind of uh, cylindrical rod and we were to apply a distributed load uh, along the cross section or along the uh, the cross section of this cylindrical rod this distributed load if we if we took this 3d geometry and made a, a 2d profile view of it we would produce the following diagram where we have some area we have the distributed load which is applied along that area uh, where that distributed load in this case we're going to describe as m times y and we know that if we were to take that distributed load and, and, and find a force at each position, or if we were to, uh, to subdivide the distributed load into an infinite number of points, then we would find that at any particular point, we would have some differential force value, which is applied at that point, across some differential area, some infinitely small value of area. So with that considered, um, let's go ahead and, and, and see how do we actually calculate the di differential force? Well, the differential force would be equal to the distributed load function Wy uh, times dA, where we substitute the, uh, the equation for Wy and we end up with my dA. Now, if we were to try to attempt to find the moment equation or the differential moment at that particular point, then the moment would be uh, the differential moment would be equal to y which is our distance let me put that that y distance in there our distance y times our differential force where our differential force we, we take our differential force and plug it in and we'll find that our differential moment is equal to the slope m times y squared uh, times dA now with that done, um, let's go ahead and integrate both sides of this equation. If we were to, to integrate both sides of this equation, uh, do an indefinite, uh, an indefinite integral, we would be able to find that the moment of the entire, across the entire cross section is equal to m, the integral of y squared dA. So from this relationship that we just derived, we find that there's a certain property um, related to these x-axes, uh, or, or, or a, certain pro a certain property related to the x-axes that we can describe. And that property, this portion of the equation, will we describe as the area moment, not, not uh, mount, but moment of inertia about the x-axes. And that's pretty much how we derive our moment of inertia equations. 
let's go ahead and, and go into some of the naming conventions that people have used. Um, one of the things that will confuse you the most when you're dealing with issues of a moment of inertia is the different ways that people um, or different researchers or scientists or engineers describe the same thing. So uh, some of the naming conventions for, mo for moment of inertia of an area is moment of inertia moment of inertia of area, area moment of inertia, or the second moment of inertia. All three of these different naming conventions are the same. In this book, we primarily describe it as the area moment of inertia. Um, so this quantity that we've derived is something that is used uh, across mechanics, whether it's fluid mechanics, the mechanics of materials, solid mechanics, statics, or dynamics. So it's a quantity that you'll continue to see, um, but depending on the book that you're reading, its name may be uh, described as something different. So it's important for you to become familiar with the equation and familiar with the concept. So when you're given a problem and it asks for the area moment of inertia or it uh, provides an equation for the area moment of inertia that you're able to readily identify uh, and know where that equation is derived from. So now let's kind of go into the area moment of inertia and, and show you know, the, 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 the true form of the equation. Um, so again, the area moment of inertia is something that has to be specified about a particular axis. When we did our earlier der derivation, we specified it relative to the x-axis. But you can also specify it relative to the y-axis. Um, and in this case, uh, that's what we do. And we find that the area moment of inertia about the x-axis is equal to ix is equal to the integral of y squared dA. And the area moment of inertia about the y-axis is iy is equal to the integral of x squared dA. Now, uh, in some cases, or sometimes, it'll be uh, necessary for us to determine the polar moment of, of inertia. Um, and this uh, polar moment of inertia is uh, is the quantity for dA about a pole, uh, a point O, so or about the z-axis. And in order to find that polar moment of inertia, we simply add together our moments of inertia for the x and the uh, for the, the area moments of inertia about the x and the y-axis. Simply sum those together. We'll be able to find our polar moment of inertia, which is the moment of inertia about the z-axis. So now let's go ahead into section 10.2, which is the parallel axis theorem for an, era, for an area. So the parallel axis theorem can be used to find the area moment of inertia of an area about any axis that is parallel to the axis passing through the centroid for which the moment of inertia is known. Um, so in essence, what, in essence what this means is say we have some body, we know it's centroid, and it has an x-axis and a y-axis. We'll call these axes x prime and y prime. When we apply the area moment of inertia equations, whether for the x-axis or the y-axis, um, we're finding them about this centroid point. So, we, so we're applying our, 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 x, our, our, our x equation, which is the, the, the ix equation, which is the integral of y squared dA, or we're applying our, our uh, y equation, which is iy is equal to the integral of x squared dA. We're finding those about the centroid of the body. So what happens when we want to actually find the area moment of inertia about an axis that is parallel but not at the centroid of the body. In this case, we need to use the parallel axis theorem. Now, it's important to note that we've already calculated the, the or it's easy for us and it's known for us to be able to calculate the area moment of inertia ix prime and, and iy prime, which are the, the ones relative to the x prime and the y prime axes. Um, but we need to find um, the, the, the x, the ix due, the, due to the x-axis and the y-axis, to, the, to these parallel and perpendicular axes. Um, so let's examine and expand. So let's, let's do the derivation and expand um, the information for this particular problem, right? So uh, if we wanted to 
determine the uh, the inertia about the x-axis, then we know that the differential inertia with respect to the x-axis is going to be equal to y prime, which is the distance from a differential area dA. So y prime, which is the distance from the D, uh, differential area A, plus our differential distance dy, which is the distance between the x-axis and the x prime axis, right? Uh, and all of that with respect to dA. So with that knowledge, we can simply integrate both sides of this equation. If we integrate both sides of this equation, uh, indefinite, uh, do an indefinite integration of both sides, we'll be able to find that our Ix, or the area moment of inertia relative to the x-axis, is going to be the following. This, uh, this uh, uh, polynomial type structure here. And when we take the terms and separate them, and we identify what the meanings for each of these terms are, we find that the second term is going to be a term that passes through the centroid. And so in essence, it's going to become a zero term. Uh, with that knowledge, we can very easily or very readily identify that the first term is going to be equal to the uh, moment of inertia about the centroid of the body and the second term is going to be an additional term that we need to find in order to find the area moment of inertia about our new axes about the x-axis itself so with that knowledge we have basically identified uh, the general form for the uh, parallel axis theorem to, in order to find the area moments of inertia for a parallel axis and thus our equations are uh, Ix is equal to Ix prime, where Ix prime is the, um, the area moment of inertia about the centroid of a body, plus A times dy squared, right? Where A is equal to the total area of the body, and dy squared, it will, dy is the distance between the parallel axes, between the x axes and the x prime axes. And we can do a similar thing for our uh, Iy. And then we can also do a similar thing for our polar uh, 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 moment of inertia J, where we take the uh, polar moment of inertia about the centroid plus the area times the distance D, which is the, the true distance or the length distance uh, between point O of the new axes and point O prime of the, uh, uh, at the centroid of the body, okay? So now let's go ahead and move on to the radius of gyration of an area. So the distribution of cross-section about a centroid axis uh, is what the radius of gyration is. It's the distribution of the cross-sectional area about a centroidal axis. Um, this uh, radius of gyration is something that you'll use often in structural mechanics, but you can also find a similar type form of equation in vibrations. Um, so this equation uh, can be described in, in, in three ways. You have your kx, your ky, and your k0, where your kx and your ky are relative to the x-axis, and your k0, again, is, is kind of almost like a polar term, which uh, is a relationship uh, in the z direction. So now let's move on to 10.4, which is moments of inertia for a composite body. So sometimes you'll have a body um, which you can subdivide into uh, simpler shapes. So think of it like a set of Lego blocks where if you took those blocks and combined them together you would have a particular shape but you could also break it apart into sub simple shapes um, and that's what a composite body is. Now when you have a composite body and you know it's easy for you to, to um, identify the uh, area moments of inertia for the simpler shapes, then you can simply find the area moment of inertia for a composite body by summing up the area moments of inertia for each of the simple parts. So you'll find Ix is equal to the sum of Ix uh, for each of the parts. Uh, the IY is equal to the sum of the IY for each uh, individual parts, and the I, 
z or let's let's change this to the to the j 0 is equal to the sum of the j zeros for each of these individual parts there we go there we go so the area moment of inertia uh, for many common cross sections is given in the back of the book so if you were to go to the back page of your statics book you'll find for a lot of the simpler shapes that the area moment uh, of inertia equations are given okay so it's going to be very important for you to um, to become familiar with them um, and it would probably be uh, I would encourage you to put for some of the simpler shapes the actual equations for the area moment of inertia on your formula sheet because it could save you a time it could uh, it, it, it'll definitely save you time meaning you wouldn't have to derive the equations yourself um, so do take that into consideration but for some for some of the simple geometries here are the equations if you have a rectangle the area moment of inertia about the centroid is, is given here if you have a, uh, a some kind of triangle uh, the 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 uh, moment of inertia with the with respect to the x-axis is given here um, if you have a uh, half circle the 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 area moments of inertia are given and then if you have a full circle the area moments of inertia are given um, I would encourage you to you know maybe do some practice maybe take some of these simpler shapes and attempt to derive the the uh, area moment of inertia equations that would be something that you know might be useful to you um, for you to get comfortable and to get more familiar with you know what is the area moment of inertia how do you derive it um, but in general in this class you, you there's no requirement that you that you derive it unless you don't have the simpler shapes on your formula sheet um, so with that said um, this is pretty much the material that we're going to cover for chapter 10 here um, it's important for you it's in particular it's very important for you to understand the parallel axis theorem uh, so definitely spend some time doing uh, some practice problems perhaps uh, review the example problems in the book take a couple of the uh, complete the fundamental problems for this section and then also try to do just a couple of select random problems um, from the book as well as completing your homework um, this moment of inertia chapter uh, while it is the last chapter that we're gonna cover for our statics course it is a chapter that's going to feed directly into dynamics. So if you have a lack of skill uh, uh, or you don't understand fully the, the area moments of inertia, the next class you take, whether it's dynamics, mechanics and materials, or solid mechanics, you're going to meet this again. So it's important for you to really uh, try, to, try to internalize this concept. And you should expect some, some problems, or at least one or two problems, uh, uh, of the moment of inertia uh, probably a parallel axis problem uh, on your final exam so with that said um, thank you for watching this video um, I, I think this is going to be the last video for statics so um, thank you for you know taking the time uh, to, to watch through these videos um, to go through uh, the, the journey which is learning statics with me um, if you have any questions uh, or comments or concerns, you can always post uh, a video onto the YouTube. Uh, you can always post a, a comment on the YouTube page, or you can send me an email. Uh, I'll continue to update these videos and add additional content as I as I have time. Uh, probably the the next uh, uh, the next set of videos, the series of videos, will probably be a lot of example problems. Um, probably even some design challenge type problems like if you have a design how can you use statics in order to improve your design um, but other than that thank you for your time and I'll see you guys next time